Hi everybody, welcome to What's in the Box, and today we have a bit of a special one. We've got Dark Imperium in, the new two-player starter set for Warhammer 40k. John, okay, calm down, calm down, calm down. Do you, no, do you know what? All right. See, see before the, I believe before this box set was announced, right? Um, they did uh, Warhammer TV did a little live stream, a little Q and A mm -hmm. session about it, and they were chatting back and forth to a few people, and they were getting some good questions asked and stuff like that. And I was just sat listening, and I was like, oh, this this actually sounds really special. I I quite <laughs> like this. And then when the when we started seeing images of Dark Imperium, then I was just like, oh, right, <laughs> let's let's not hang about. Let's yeah, let's open the box. So. Beautiful artwork on the front. Oh, beautiful, gorgeous. That's, that's, yeah. Okay. Gorgeous. Okay. Hold it up. That's, yeah. That's <laughs> is that my lovely. winning enough smile? Uh, yeah, like it <laughs> doesn't need to be a winning smile. So we know Games Workshop. They do fantastic models. They mm -hmm. know how to do great two-player starter kits. Mm -hmm. So let's dive straight in and see what we're getting in the box. So, oh, that's nice. That is nice. Uh, isn't it? I'll hold that up. Joe, I, that, I this is my favorite that piece artwork. of artwork from Eighth already. Yeah, I want that as like an A2 poster. I want this as like a big cloth flag or something. Oh, that would be cool, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, well, uh, let's pop it open and get to the minis. Because mm -hmm. that's what everyone's been waiting to lay their hands on. Yeah. Is we've got the new Primaris Marines and we've got the Death Guard in yeah. here. So it's Chaos versus Space Marines, one of those classic fights. Yes. So, big sprue. Big sprue, big Primaris sprue by the looks of it. Okay. Uh, well, John, uh, you've been having a look at these, so if you want to actually talk to us about what's on the sprues. Yeah. Here, yeah? So what we have on this sprue is this top guy up here, I believe, is the Primaris Lieutenant. Okay. Or the Ancient, sorry. My, my mistake, it's the Ancient because he's the one that carries the banner. Ah, I see. Um, so that's this here? Yeah. So he carries the banner, either a chapter banner or a company banner, you know, mm -hmm. depending on how renowned and whatnot he is. Yeah. And as we move on through, we've got all the other guys here. We've got yeah. someone with a bolt pistol. Yeah, and we have the new rifles, the new bolt rifles. Yeah, they're they're yeah they are. Those have been rifles, extended a fair bit. They have. They're a lot bigger now, mm -hmm. and it just looks so good. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'll assume this is our sergeant with his power sword. Uh, it's either a sergeant or it could be one of the lieutenants. Okay, because I believe they have swords too. Okay, we can get to that. Yeah, well, we are going to build the kit as well, but I mean, yeah. like, the the detail is super crisp on these, as you can see. They are built to go together one way, so if you're new to the hobby and this is your first foray into wargaming or miniatures building, mm -hmm. all of the sprues are numbered. You can see the little pips here. Yep. So whenever you're working on these, don't go and clip everybody out and then have a big pile of bits yeah. that you're then trying to work through. I, I would recommend you go through the instruction manual and clip out the parts for each individual guy. Yep. Maybe put them into a little baggie and then work through them one at a time. Might uh, be the way to do it. See, the way I normally do things like this, whenever mm -hmm. it's all numbered like this, I just go miniature by miniature. So yeah. I get the bits for the miniature, I clean the bits for the miniature, and I then put that miniature together. That yeah. way I know I've not missed anything. Yeah. You know, because me, I'm, I, whenever I'm building miniatures, I can get a little scatterbrain. So if I have a big pile of bits to clean, I start working through it, start working through it, and I'll always miss a bit. Yeah. So I think doing it miniature by miniature, you have less chance of actually missing like little bits of mold lines, little bits of flash where you've clipped them off the sprue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's just me. Yeah. Well, I mean, everybody approaches it different. I yeah. guess for a, for a kit that is as you say, you put it together one particular way. Yeah. Bar there's maybe a couple of options like helmets and heads and stuff like that. Or, oh, yeah, yeah. or maybe probably interchangeable. I will find out when I go in the, off and build this without you. Stop, stop, stop with the, the <laughs> I'm going to go build this. I'm going to go build this. I know. I want to build the, the chaos out of this set. Because <laughs> anybody who's out there knows whenever I was doing 40k way back in the day, I was a chaos player. Yes, you were. I love the Dark Gods and I love Papa Nurgle. Yes, so, you did. Speaking of plague... Plague. So you want some plague? Let's let's see some plague. Right. Well, which plague would you like? Do you want the big sprue of plague? Because yeah, this, give, me the, give me the big sprue of plague. This, this, this has the vehicle on it. Yes, the the blight drone. Mm -hmm. Now this was a Forge World model, and they've done the same to this as what they did to the Contempt of Dreadnought. Mm -hmm. So they've created a plastic version that you can now get in this kit. This also has our Lord on it, I believe. Yeah. So if I bring the bits in, we've got bits for some of your plague marines and stuff in here. Bits for your blight drone. I'm guessing that's a, a huge section of the body. This is not a small piece. No. Uh, moving on across, we've got different weapons. I'm seeing old bolt guns because these guys don't have the latest tech just yet. I'm no. guessing there's a raid being planned. <laughs> now you've got these, which are plague knives as well, which actually have some nice special rules. Mm -hmm. uh, now, you've also got some of the engines and stuff here as well. And you've got the big, big axe that your lord's going to carry. Mm -hmm. This thing is probably about eight foot long if you put it in scale. Would so you, would you say? I mean, what... What what's the size of a marine these days? Quite big. Yeah, they're they're still seven Little. seven foot plus, really, aren't they? Yeah, well, I mean, that's taller than a, a space marine on the sprue there. Yeah, 
You've also got the, the weapons here for your, your Blight Drone, and ooh, that's lovely. All right, now this is something I wished they had done in some of the older kits. Yeah. And let me bring this up. Do you see the plasma gun for your squad here? Uh-huh. Actually, the old school style plasma gun. Oh, so it is, yeah. That's been blighted up to yeah. be a Nurgle weapon. I like that. I like that touch because you would assume these guys would be running around with that older tech. Yeah. Okay. For a while. <laughs> for, yes, for a while. Um, for a while. You know, if uh, if we manage to kill a Primaris and he's got you know a better weapon, we'll maybe pick that up. We'll have to pick that up. Yeah, and devote, right. devote it to Papa Nurgle. Right. This is another Primaris sprue. I believe this is parts for the captain. Okay. And for the. Uh, heavy jump guys as well. The intercessors. No, not the intercessors. The we'll get to that. We'll in a get because to that. we we ha we have some of the some of the books in here as well. I do we'll apologize. I am still learning this, so we well, will th go through the, the paperwork. Thing. This is the thing for this kit. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a chance to relearn what's going on in the world. Yes. Because uh, I I had the good fortune to learn to play this mm -hmm. and hear a bit about the the background and stuff that's been happening. Yep. This box actually picks up years after the big cataclysm that has made the Imperium the way it is today. Yeah, and that includes like the fall of Kyria and stuff like that, doesn't exactly, it? Exactly, yeah. exactly. This, so is this, is the aftermath. Are, this is when things are starting to settle down, even yeah. beyond the aftermath. Yeah. Because uh, at the point where this is kicking in, Robert Gulliman has just finished his campaign where he's went out and visited all the Space Marine chapters dropping off the new Primaris Marines. Yeah, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's not hang about. We'll get on to the spruce. So yeah, we've got nice big flowing cape. Mm -hmm. Backpack with what looks to be some kind of bolter or energy feed? Ooh, par feed for something. Par yeah. feed for something. Would that would that be for that? But is that isn't that like the the hell blaster, the big plasma? Yeah, this is the the new style plasma weapons mm -hmm. uh, made by Call. These are a lot more powerful and a lot more dangerous. But it's still a plasma weapon. If you don't use it right, it can blow up in your face. Yes. Use responsibly. Yeah. <laughs> We've then got the. I think this is the front plate for our captain. Our captain. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I love that. That segmented sort of belly, mm -hmm. but it's even the the higher raised uh, goret around the top there is really nice. Yeah, uh, we've got some more parts for your regular Primaris guys here, or that might be also for your your captain. Um, could be. We've got nice swords, mm -hmm. and yes, some of these now these troops. A lot of people have looked at these and said, "Oh, those are the the new jump marines, the new yeah. assault marines." They're not. They're not. They're not. They're not. So basically, these guys are rocking in with what's essentially two miniaturized bolt, uh, heavy bolters. Heavy bolters. Ooh. And they're essentially an orbital insertion troop. Uh -huh. So these guys will be standing in an airlock above the planet, yep. ready to go, release the airlock, and ha! <laughs> but I mean, like, you, it gives a really nice cinematic Im Im image. Yeah. Uh, if I could word today, I'm tired. <laughs> uh, basically, these guys, if you can imagine, say, three of these guys landing in a circle, crunching yeah. into the ground, and just letting rip in a circle. One important thing, mm. they don't have a melee weapon. Usually, you find them with melee weapons. They don't have a melee weapon, right. and I have on good authority that you do not need a melee weapon if your opponent is basically going to be splattered across 20 meters of wall by the time you're done. That's fair enough. <laughs> I, I understand this logic. I like this logic. Yeah, they, they do throw out a <laughs> disgusting amount of shots. Yeah. Now, I believe that this is not a duplicate sprue, but we do have a couple of duplicate yes, sprues so there's, in here. There's the first one. Yeah, so there's a duplicate of this sprue, which is more of your Primaris Marines. Well, each each sprue seems to have a bit of the Primaris and a bit of uh, your Hellblaster squad and so on like that. Yeah. So Because there's a, a little bit of everything on that yeah. sprue by the looks of ah, it. There they are. So these are essentially what's your mini heavy bolters. Yeah. And they come paired. Yeah. You can just imagine them just chugging away with those. <laughs> They're nice, aren't they? Yeah. Do you know and what I really actually, like? You see the hydraulics on yes. the actual feet here? That's just, what I, that's just what I was about to point out. I like the fact that they've actually, in the model design, they've figured out a way of saying, you know, these guys are dropping from orbit. They're going to need some sort of shock absorption on <laughs> on top of the the power yeah. armor. Yeah, yeah. But e even then, you can imagine that. You know those uh, reverse jointed legs you see some people running about on. Yeah. And let them do like backflips and stuff. Now, I don't imagine a space marine doing a backflip. He but could you do could. a backflip. Completely do a backflip. <laughs> do you know how strong these guys are? Do you know how heavy the armor is? It doesn't matter. They're I suppose trained. the armor increases their strength. Possibly. Why would a space marine do a backflip, though? No, no. We're, we're going way off topic. <laughs> we're going way, way, way off topic. Why wouldn't he do a backflip? Yeah. 
All right, now you get two of those sprues. Two of those sprues, so yeah. So you don't need to see the second. So let's, um, I'm trying to figure out. So there's the duplicates. There's more of your Death Guard. Yeah, and uh, oh, so nice. So, so nice. <laughs> You're going to enjoy these, aren't you? Well, if you look at here, this is one of the characters in the box. He's got like a big plague bell coming up over the top. Mm -hmm. I believe this is his front. And he's, again, running around with that that older style plasma pistol. Yeah. So it does feel like these guys have just walked out from the long war. Mm -hmm. But you've got so much going on here. Lots of flowing detail. I believe this is for the Psyker you get in the box, because the Chaos side do get a Psyker. Yeah. So that's going to introduce you to all parts of the game which I think is perfect for this, because yes. if you have rules in a game that's not in your starter box and people aren't using them, yeah. whenever they come to them, there's a bit of a hitch there where you have to go back and reread. You, you hit a little bit of a brick wall, but mm -hmm. it's it's nice they've got at least one it's, psyker in there. Yeah, it's in there so both players can actually see what's going on. So yep. if you and your mate get this to split it down, happy days. Now these are pox walkers? I believe that's the name of them. I'll, uh, we'll double check it in a minute. We, we are will, still learning. We will go through the rest of the box. Yeah, yeah. Because there, there is still a lot more in the box. But wait, there's more. But wait. <laughs> uh, so, moving through here, yeah, we've got more of our Plague Marines and stuff. We've got our, our lovely little Gribbly guys. So these little dudes, they're not exactly zombies. No, I, ne exactly I, zombies. I never thought Nurgle would, would be in the mood for zombies. Well, he, they kind of like little abominations. Well, of. not exactly, not exactly. So, basically, whenever people die and they come back as these... They're basically walking plagues. Mm -hmm. The only thing that's keeping these guys running is the virus that's inside them, keeping them alive, keeping uh, them up and walking. Okay. One thing about these guys, though, which is very, very cool. Say I get a squad of 10 of these mm -hmm. into, say, your Primaris Marines. Yes. I get lucky and I kill yeah. a couple of Primaris Marines. Those two Primaris Marines liquidize right. and turn into sludge. Okay. And from that sludge, da, more two more appear. <laughs> So these guys, as they kill units, I mean, if you get them into a blob of guardsmen and just start chewing through, oh, as the guardsmen die, they're reinforcing the chaos side, which do you know I like. What? Do you know what? It doesn't matter how many editions of 40k come out, the Astra Militarum always get it tight. <laughs> it's like, oh, we haven't we, seen what's happening to them yet. Well, this is true. We haven't seen that yet, but it always feels like <laughs> they get the rough end of the deal in the 40, 41st millennium. Well, th this is one of the key things for the new Dark Imperium. The world of the old 40k, it was already a really grim, dark future that you were looking yeah. at. It now was, it's grimmer, it is darker. It, it then, already was an empire struggling under the weight of itself. Yeah, now with the fall of Kiri. Now I have had a little bit of a glance at some of the backstory, so if I get stuff wrong, it is because I'm still learning. But from what I can understand, after the fall of Kiri, Abaddon the Despoiler was actually able to de destroy essentially what was a defensive network on a ton of planets. Mm -hmm which was actually keeping the Immaterium at bay. Once those were destroyed, wah, yeah, the everything. Imperium got ripped in two. Yeah. You know, horrible warp storms, no communication, Psychers going insane in the, uh, the Astronomicon. Mm -hmm. You know, the guiding light of the Emperor completely snuffed out, couldn't be seen anywhere. Yeah. So, you know, and times where, are bad. And where do you find this information? Of course. In, in the tome. Yes. In no. the beautiful looking tome. Now, first you're, you're going to say, say something important here, aren't you? Right. See the thickness of this book. 90% of this is background. Yeah. Right? Do not be scared by the big, heavy rule book. Mm. Okay? Because about the only thing you need to know is there are about eight pages worth of rules in here, and that's the bones of the game. Yeah. That is going to get you up, going to get you playing, teaching you the basic system, mm -hmm. the turn sequence, and basically everything you need to know to get running. Yeah. Whenever you get into the minutiae of the game, it's whenever you're building your armies. Because mm -hmm. that's where you get your special rules, all the additional nice bits that actually yeah. add theme and flavor to your forces. Yeah. So this is basically that wedge mm -hmm. that we've talked about so many times. How many times have we looked at game systems and went, this is an incredible, amazing, gigantic world. How do I get in? Yeah. That's this, it. It's been boiled down to this. This now, is your is wedge good. into the world. This is yep. where you break in from. And some of the stuff that they've done in here for the actual artwork and stuff is absolutely beautiful. This will also take you through all the old fluff, bringing you right up to date and telling you what's happened to bring us to where we are today in the yep. world. So having a look at some of the artwork. Oh, look at it. You only like that because it's chaos. Uh, that was the first page I opened. <laughs> but let me just quickly flicking through. There's tons of stuff here. 
there's ways of it telling you how the hierarchy of the Imperium is laid out now. Because yep. Robert Gulliman coming back, he's going to be shaking stuff up. Mm -hmm. You've got more here showing just how dark this world is. This is an Imperial city. Yeah. You know, whenever you imagine the Imperium, this is not tra la 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 la, we are happy humans. This is no. You are one of untold billions grinding under the heel of the most convoluted bureaucracy ever created. Yep. And I, I think um, Games Workshop in the past with previous editions of 40k, I think the artwork spoke more than the, the, the writing held it up. Mm. And I think it's starting to switch around now. The artwork is supporting the writing rather than the other way around because yeah. the first thing I would always do with a 40k book was look at the art because mm. you got a theme you got a feel for yeah, the, the flavor world. of where you were going. And it, it felt heavy and dark and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But now the writing is getting up to the stage where in the rule books you're looking at it and going, I can actually picture that now. Even if I've been out of 40k for as many years as I have, mm -hmm. I read a paragraph and go, oh, I actually feel really intimidated and very... Yeah, that, that's what you want. I feel rubbish as a human being. I'm like, I'm not worth anything anymore. <laughs> <laughs> But you see, that, that's, that's the whole darkness of it. That's, mm -hmm. that's what I always loved whenever I was reading the old Warhammer 40k novels. Yep. Because whenever you were reading about, say, some underhive scavenger just trying to live day to day to day, yeah. you know, that, that story in the grand scheme of things is just the tiniest grain of sand on the beach, mm -hmm. which is incredible. Now, what I was talking about uh, for what's going on in space... Oh, the, the big... We, we have the map. Yeah. And as you can see... The purple bit is warp. <laughs> the purple bit is basically what has happened to the Imperium. Yeah. And there's one unfortunate thing. So, uh, you see where everything is close to Terra here, all the Space Marine chapters and stuff. Look where the Blood Angels ended up. Her Blood Angels. They're on the wrong side of the rift. They are. They are completely <laughs> cut off. And I was, I was reading some of the backstory about whenever this was all happening, the Blood Angels system was actually getting invaded by Leviathan. Mm -hmm. so, the, so the Baal system. Yes, yeah. yes. So whenever the Tyranid High Fleet was encroaching, it was massive. This is a full High Fleet. Mm -hmm. You know, unimaginable numbers of Tyranids dropping from the skies, milling through. The Blood Angels actually called out to all their successor chapters, calling in all the ranks of Space Marines to fight and defend. Mm -hmm. Even an excommunicated chapter came in Ooh. to actually stand to the defense of the home world. Yeah. It wasn't enough. And everything was just crushing and crushing and crushing in on them. Mm -hmm. You know, entire chapters wiped out. This is an epic sort of story that you can now tell with this. Yeah. You get that sense of that, that grand scale of destruction, which is it's coming through really well in the book, from what I've read. Yeah. Uh, now, I'm going to flick on through because there are other things to see. There are some of the classic artwork, and you do get a feel and flavor for what's happening with each faction in this book as well. Yeah. So here, obviously, you can't miss them. It has to be the Adeptus of Startes. Yeah. Imperial Fist there, and as you jump on through, it actually talks about some of the new weapon stuff, gives you some nice artwork. That's lovely, isn't it? They have absolutely nailed the Primaris. They really have. Yeah. And this is one of those huge, huge things whenever they came to make the Primaris. Mm. You know, the Space Marine is such an iconic thing for Games Workshop. It's so iconic, it's outside Warhammer World, right? Well, uh, no, no. Was. No. It was. Right. It's as you walk in the front door yeah. after they did the remodel. Ah, okay. But uh, no, it's it's an iconic silhouette. Mm -hmm. How many people out there, I guarantee you, every player of Warhammer 40k or any war game will have had Space Marines at some point. Yeah. My first force, Space Marines. Yep. Your first force? My first force was uh -huh, uh, Imperial Guard. Really? <laughs> it was, actually, yeah. Well, I suppose. And then I went to Space tanks, Marines. Tanks. <laughs> but no, it's it's such an iconic thing. This was always the biggest draw. Mm -hmm. This idea of a superhuman warrior, yep. the best of humankind. Mm -hmm. You know that is it, just something that you cannot get away from. To revisit it, to redesign it. Yeah, they're, that's got to be scary. They're like the they are the forty first millennium's knightly class. Mm -hmm. You know, they're the knightly order and. They have to look intimidating, they have to feel right, they have to look right, they have to act right. Mm -hmm. And it's the But they they are built to be the ultimate humanoid war machine. Yeah. I can imagine that when uh, the fellows in Games Workshop, like the sculptors, the designers and mm -hmm. even the, the higher ups and the, the management and all went, We need to look at Space Marines and we need to do something and we're like they they all sort of maybe just went the, the this is that, this that is a very, very breath. It's a delicate thing, yeah, but they've really done it well. Mm -hmm. You know, to actually increase the scale of the Space Marines and stuff, 
to actually bring them up to something bigger yeah. and better. It's a it, it's a real challenge, and they've pulled a, it off. Yeah, it's a new breed, but at the same time, they still have to have that foundation based in the Marines that we all know and love. Exactly. Now, one thing I want to point out, this is something I think is genius for this new edition. Mm -hmm. So, the rules are boiled down to eight pages. That does not make this a simple game. Mm -hmm. It makes it a faster game. Yeah. And the one thing they've done that is going to speed this game up more than anything else, the one thing from the older editions that I had the most issues with memorizing, yeah. is the wound chart. Mm -hmm. Would you like to see your new wound chart? Yes, I would like to see my new wound This chart. is your new wound chart. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it used to be like half a page. This is how you wound. Yeah. It's incredibly simple. Basically, if our strength is equal, it's a four plus to wound. Okay. If my strength is lower by yours than one, mm -hmm. it's a five up. Right. Uh, if my strength is greater than yours by one, it's a three up. Mm -hmm. If my strength is double your toughness, two up. Mm -hmm. If my strength is half your toughness, it's a six up. Right. That's it. You have simple. It. On the actual data sheets now, it's a flat number to hit. Yep. Very simple, adding and subtracting to figure out what the wounding is, and then your saves. Okay. So the, the actual feel and flavor of the system, it has that DNA of 40k. So you move everything, you shoot everything, yep. you assault. Yep. You can shoot and assault now, Okay. which is nice. Yeah. The only thing you can't that stops you from assaulting is if you do an advance. Mm -hmm. And what an advance is, it's essentially a bit of a run. Okay. Yep. So you'll say, okay, I want to advance with this unit. You roll your dice, add that to your movement, and that's you essentially sprinting up the field to try and get in there. And you're so busy sprinting up the field, you don't have time to shoot. You don't have time yeah. to charge. It, it's also, when someone says advance to me, it's more of a, a controlled tactical move. Mm. And the last thing you want to do in a tactical move is go, quick, get him, and yeah. charge yeah. off into something. Because yeah, you you've broke your formations now. So yeah, yeah it, it makes sense to me that way. Whenever you come to fighting, mm -hmm. it's really nice. So uh, let's say I have a power fist and I charge into you. What's going to happen? Uh, you're going to punch me in the face and I'm going to have a very bad day. In the old edition, I would be going last. Yes, you would. Initiatives, yeah. In this edition, I'm running in and I can punch you first. Ah, uh, okay. So <laughs> the person who's on the charge, that momentum of the charge in gives you the initiative. Yeah. Once you come to subsequent rounds, you pick the fights and it's back and forth. Yeah. So very much like Age of Sigmar, but it's, it's a nicer way to do it. It feels more tactical that I can pick when and where I'm having my fights. Yeah. Because if I have a big sprawling eight foot table mm -hmm. and lots of fights going along, I could start at one end, my opponent could start at the other, depending on what we think is tactically the most important yeah. stuff. So it's you, gonna add a lot to that. Yeah, you may be confident you'll win one fight and you might need that fight to end quicker than some of the other ones. Exactly. Or uh, say you have uh, something big and scary, say you have a character yeah. and I've got them swarmed. I want that character down now. Yeah. I don't if, care that you're attacking a key squad up the other end. That dies first. Yeah, if he's giving off like aura effects to people nearby him and stuff Bingo. like that, boosting them, you want Bingo. that out of the way. Bingo. Yeah. Right, that'll be enough from our big, big rulebook. This is a fantastic read and a great addition to this set. Now, there's more. The, the important books for the set, I would say. Yes. Well, what you have here is the book that will get you further on. This is your core. Yeah, I'd imagine that you can have this box set, use everything in this box set without necessarily needing to touch this. And the next few pieces of paperwork will explain why. Yeah. Okay. So we have two booklets, mm -hmm. one for the Death Guard, uh, yep. and one for the Primaris Marines. So, Death Guard, we all know Nurgle. Yeah, of course. And lovely artwork. Suitable artwork. <laughs> of course. <laughs> but as we work into it, we're actually going to see that this gives you a little bit on the background of the Death Guard, mm -hmm. just to get you started. It's some lovely artwork, and it tells you who's in there, right? You've got your Noxious Lightbringer, yep. who is the guy with the big bell on top. He looks so badass. Yep. You've got your Plague Lord, or Lords of Contagion. Lord, Lord, yeah. I'll get the name right. <laughs> in the box, you've also got the Plague Caster. This is your Psyker from the set. Mm -hmm. You've then obviously got your Plague Marines. These are going to be the backbone of your force. Yep. Then move on. You've got the Bloat Drone. Yep. Which is really cool because it's actually got weapons that automatically hit. E and it's a vehicle, and the vehicle rules have, rules have changed quite a lot as well. Yeah. We then have these little guys, the Poxwalkers. They are the, the little gribbly dudes who are just masses of flesh reanimated by the virus. Yeah, I feel like you're going to have a lot of fun with those. Yeah. Well, I mean, like for painting wise, this is going to be great. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, yes, you can go for the, the classic look of Nurgle. But there are so many ways you they, can paint these They guys. give you options, yeah. Tons you know, of and options. Then you get a lovely little gallery mm -hmm. showing everybody that you're going to get in the set. So this is, I believe, everything you get in the set. So what do we got here? 
we have one, two, three, four, five, six Plague Marines, a Plague Champion. You've got the Lord of Contagion, the Plague Caster, the Blight Bringer, the Bloat Drone, and the Toxwalkers for two, four, six, eight, nine. Ah, now that's important. If you're getting nine of these in the set, they have a special rule that we'll get to in, in a moment here. Yep. Because all the data sheets are in this little book, so you have everything you need to play here. Do you, do you know what might be easier if you read the back of the box? Uh, yeah. Uh, so let you're on Death Guard. Uh huh. One Lord of Contagion. One Noxious Blightbringer. Yeah, I just went through all this. One Plague Cast. Yeah, I'm just I'm letting He's you know. Checking. It's seven Plague Marines. Okay. One Blight Drone or yep. Bloat Drone, sorry, and twenty Poxwalkers. Twenty of them. Twenty. Ooh, lovely. Because I knew I was look. You were looking at the miniature gallery, and I was like, that can't be right. So I had to get the back of the box. Fair point. Okay. Right now, <laughs> uh, on the data sheets, here's something important. Okay. Because we have a psyker in here, they've actually included the. Uh, the psychic table that he gets from. Okay. So, Contagion Discipline. So you'll roll on this at the start of the game to generate his psychic powers. Mm -hmm. He's then obviously got all the data sheets with all the special rules. I like data sheets. Yeah, this, this makes life so much easier having these. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the important things, some of the special rules for Nurgle I want to have a quick chat about because they are very cool. Mm -hmm. They have disgustingly resilient. Okay. Everybody has this. Right. So what it does, if I quickly flick, flick to this page, <clears throat> Each time a model in this unit loses a wound, loses a wound, not die, roll a die, and on a five or six, the model does not lose that wound. Ah, okay, so it's so, like an invulnerable save. Ah, but it's not named inv invulnerable save because, right, because there are some there are things that will take away, away that. Yeah, this is just a, a Nurgle yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah, a lot of them also have plague weaponry, right? Mm -hmm. So any plague weapon, you can reroll any wound rolls of a one while attacking with a plague weapon. So mm -hmm. It's giving you a nice little reroll in there. Uh, other than that, there is tons you can do with this. Yeah, you know, so we've got that. We've got that. Uh, Plague Marines. Plague Marines are always fun. The biggest thing for them still is that toughness five, because mm -hmm. the average weapon strength going down here is going to be a four. Yeah. So basically, it makes them that little bit tougher. You're having to roll harder to get them. So mm -hmm. even though they've only got the one wound, unlike your Primaris, which have two. Yeah. They're tough enough to actually stand to it a bit. Uh, Poxwalkers, I got. Uh, Blight Drone, ah, aye, this is what I was on about. So the vehicle rules. Yeah. So vehicles now have wounds, mm -hmm. and they have a lot of wounds. Mm -hmm. So for this guy here, he's going to start off with 10 wounds, right? As he drops wounds, he has, his stats here are going to start dropping. So mm -hmm. his movement, his strength, and his attacks. Yeah. So I like that idea that as a vehicle's getting damaged, it's becoming less effective. Do you remember in the old editions, uh, say you took the hull points off something, and it was still pretty much fighting at full strength. Yeah. As you're dropping those wounds, it's getting worse. The other thing is, everything can hurt everything now. Mm -hmm. So this thing is a toughness of seven. You're not very likely to wound it with a last gun. No. But you could. Yeah, you, you could feasibly if you had enough firepower on it. Well, it's, it's toughness seven, and you need threes to see it. Yeah. So let's say you were firing something strength four at it. What do you need to wound? Do the math. I can't do math. Don't, fives. don't, thank you. Don't, you. don't even put me on the spot there. <laughs> it's fives. Yeah. So it's it's very quick to see. Okay, I need fives to win that vehicle. That vehicle has a three up save and it's got 10 damage. Yeah. Can I do 10 damage needing to get fives on maybe 20 shots? You can mill through it, but yeah. you have to dedicate a lot to do it, which I like. Mm -hmm. And it means that vehicles aren't stupidly overpowered. Yeah. Uh, I think that's everything aside from the points appendix at the back, yep. but there are other books for that because the way this plays now is I think you work off power for basic games, but you do have full points listings as well in other books. Okay. And that is the Death Guard. Yeah, yeah, this is this is your your one. Your yes. One. Calm down. Yes. Calm down. Hurry up. <laughs> right. So in this one, it's the Primaris Space Marines. Now, as far as I understand it, these guys can actually be run as a complete chapter on their own. I believe so. So that's a really nice touch. And that's part of the fluff as well, is that yeah. um, Gilliman is trying to find new chapters. And he has stuff. founded. Yeah, has founded. So you've got okay. your captains. Ancients. The ancients. And they look so pretty. Interesting. So got a little bit of fluff on stuff. Yep. Ah, Hellblazer Squad was what it was. Hellblaster. Oh, Hellblaster. It says Sorry. Blaster. Blaster. <laughs> Burp. Sorry. Uh, you've obviously got... Now, you could do these guys as Ultramarines straight out of the box. Yep. I'm not sure is if there's iconography on there, but because it's plastic, you can convert it really easily. Yep. Moving on through, you this is why I always love Space Marines. Mm -hmm. 
you had so many options for the different chapters you could do. Yeah. So you could do Blades of Vengeance, Storm Reapers, uh, Ultramarine Successors. Uh, what else have we got here? Oh, that's it. That's it. You get you get a page, or I, yeah, pages. you get a little feel for it. But there yeah. there are wikis out there that actually list all the successor chapters and stuff. Mm -hmm. And if you want, you can go and create your own. That's what I did with my first chapter, that's Lightbringers. That's what I did with my last Space Marine army. Yeah, you did. Uh, what was it? Stone Templar. Stone Templar. Yes. Yeah. Which leads me on to a very nice little thing. Are you are you thinking of resurrecting them? Yeah. What a better time for me to resurrect a, a chapter that I sort of went. I don't want to paint this anymore for a while, and then they went. Primaris Marines can be in a full chapter. It's all. <laughs> I can that, that I can is... bring back the Stone Templar as a, a Primaris chapter, which would be really cool. That is the thing. This set makes me want to play the new edition. Of course. It's really well laid out. Yep. Everything seems really clean, really streamlined. You're going to be able to have nice, fun games with your mates. Yep. And this is the thing with new editions, everybody's put back to that level playing field. Mm -hmm. As long as you can war game a bit. Yeah, everybody's back to the beginning to find out where things are going to go. So, all your mates. Now, I used to play with people who always love to run the same list over and over and over again. Yep. And it used to drive me batty because it was just like beating my head against a brick wall. <laughs> this puts everybody back to figuring out what they want to build, what they want to run yep. with. You know, yep. so you're going to see a lot of flux in the army list down at your local club, which I really like the idea of. Mm -hmm. Now, we obviously have a game, nice painted gallery. Showing off everybody. Yep. So you've got the, the drop troops, you've got your plasma troops. I like the, the sculpt on this guy. Yeah, I think, is he one of the lieutenants? Uh, Primaris lieutenant, yep. Yep. With, so that's, yeah, because you get two of those in the box. Yep. And then we're on to some special stuff for the Space Marine data sheets and then the data sheets themselves. Mm -hmm. So I'll have a quick read to see if there are any real special rules here that we need to worry about. Ah, now this is an important one. And they shall know no fear. Unit can reroll field morale tests. Mm -hmm. This is now universal across all Space Marine chapters. Yeah, everybody that that classifies are as, you a Space as Marine. Yeah, if, are you a Space Marine? You can now do that. Don't yeah. say Astartes. Because oh, because Astartes could be both sides. Could be it? chaos. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. So I'm not sure if it goes on into chaos, but I mean, if you have a more modern chapter that fell to chaos, obviously they would have it. So maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got the Space Marine chapters. All Adeptus Astartes units are drawn from a chapter. Some data sheets specify which chapter the unit is drawn from. Yeah. So uh, basically, certain characters work with certain armies. Yeah. But again, if you're doing your own chapter, you can use whichever character you want. Mm -hmm. uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. We'll go and move on. Yeah, move yeah. On. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, you've got Captain Gravis armor. Captain in Gravis armor. Oh, in Gravis armor. Sorry. He's sorry, not a named sorry. character. Yeah. Uh, so, and they shall know no fear. Ah, his iron halo is nice. Uh, so it gives them this four up and vulnerable save. Mm -hmm. This is where the characters get nice. Rights of battle. You can re-roll all hit rolls of a one made from friendly chapter units. Okay. That are within six of them. So that plasma squad. Plasma is different now because of that supercharge, right? Yeah. So plasma weapons, time was, regardless of what you were firing with it, if you rolled a one, you were taking a wound. Yeah. Because the weapon well, blew up on you. It wasn't always a blow up, was it? It was a potential. No, it did you, blow up. It, and would, you had it would hit you. Save. It was yeah. as if it vent it on you. Yeah. Plasma weapons have got a little safer now. Mm -hmm. So you can fire them regularly, and I believe not have to do that. Now, I'm not 100% on that, but there's an option to supercharge, mm -hmm. right? Which increases the strength and the damage of it by one. Whenever firing it that way, that's when I now believe that if you roll the one, that's whenever you're going to take that wound yeah. and be hit by it, right? So it's an important thing. Because this guy lets you reroll once, and you have a squad of five guys that can rapid fire plasma. Okay. <laughs> you get it? Yeah, I get it. So, plasma good. Just keep this guy close. Yep. Uh, you get your Primaris lieutenants. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing incredibly special with them. They've got bolt ri auto bolt rifle, power sword, crack and frag grenades, uh, war gear options. Eh, they're, they're a space marine. They're still a space marine. The big thing is that change up. To the wounds. Mm -hmm. So these guys, the lieutenants, have five. Your captain has six. Uh, your Primaris yeah, ancient. ancient also has five. Yep. Oh. So what do the? What's the intercessor squad? Because that's your sort of standard. What's two wounds? So they have two. So, so they are toughness four. Yeah. So the character units really are a lot more standy and yeah. They can the, it's stay that thing. There a the lot. heroes are still really heroic, yep. but they're all doing nice little bonuses because I'm sure even the lieutenant and the ancients probably giving out some stuff. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I haven't had a chance to read it just yet, but I'll leave that for everybody at home, because I'm sure there are people out there at the, at the minute just sitting beavering away reading at these going, ah, yeah, there absolutely. we go. Right, other paperwork then. Yes. You have your instruction manual. Yes, and painting guide. And painting guide. So this is basically, if you're new to the hobby, this is going to be your Bible as soon as you open this up. Yeah. Tells you all the ways to actually build the stuff, make sure it's done right. Mm -hmm. Even right down to where to place your glue. So you see here, there's just that little rim of glue around the outside where the join point is. Yeah. So that you're not actually flooding your miniature with glue. Uh, it's going through all the different components, highlighting them in different colors. I like the new 3D way they're doing it with the different colors. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of I'm It's showing you what's it, going yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, this is just the way it goes. Shows you how the flight stands work for your flying guys or your drop troops, sorry. And then we get on to this is what you need to pick up from the GW paint range to actually to mimic it. the scheme. To yes, to do yeah. the scheme. So I mean like that's one thing. Whenever Games Workshop did their new paint system, and it is a paint system because they yeah. have those different flavors of paint to actually do different jobs. Mm -hmm. You follow this through, you check out some of the paint tutorials that they've done with Duncan. Oh Duncan. <laughs> yeah, he's a really good painter. Well, one, really, of, really, really good one painter. of my mates, Leiden, met yeah. him. Did he? At, uh, I believe he was at Salute or something, and he got a picture with him, and I was absolutely ridiculously jealous. <laughs> I was more jealous than I should have been, but I was like, Argh! <laughs> But it, it even gives you a bit of a rundown on some of the other chapters here, yeah, which I is a, a nice before. touch. Yeah. So you'll see here, you've got the other chapters, so if you want to do Space Wolves, you want to do Dark Angels, Blood Angels. Yep. It gives you just that little list of the basic colours that you're going to need to to at least get a good standard down on the table. Yeah. And it does the same for the, the Death Guard as well? More than likely. So yeah. if I flip so through the instructions here. are the same, I think it's the back page. Uh, yes. Yeah. So you've got the Death Guard uh, leader, you've then got uh, the Plague Marines, and then you've got your little gribbly dudes at the bottom. Yeah. Which are your... I'm going to really need to remember these names. Pox, Pox walkers. walkers. There you go. And the last things we get in the box? Uh, we have the gigantic transfer sheet. Which does both sides, I believe. It no, should do. I think it's just Marines. Because the, mm. because the Death Guard have iconography and stuff on them. Ah, this is what they've done that's clever then. Mm -hmm. This is what I was asking about. Because some people, they don't want to paint Ultramarines. Yeah. So in this, you've got transfers for Ultramarines, Blood Angels, Dark Angels, Space Wolves. Mm -hmm. Well played games workshop. Yes. If I want to do my chapter, my way, ta-da. Mm -hmm. If I want to play Death Guard, I know it's Nurgle. I know it's Death Guard. Yeah, it, so can, it perfect. pretty much can only be the one thing. Yeah. And the way they've done this down is very clever as well, because you'll see they've actually listed out what transfers should go with what unit down yeah. the side here. So that's very, very clever. Mm -hmm. Although I have to say, Space Wolves with Primaris, I mean, like, I kind of have a, the, the image of one of the old Space Wolf Wolf Guard just standing there going, no, no, I'm, I'm the best warrior in the Imperium. I will fight you bare-fisted to prove this. <laughs> you, you take your armor, I will fight you bare-fisted, and I will <laughs> defeat you. Get out of that armor and get outside right now. <laughs> it's nothing outside that armor. Get out of the armor. It's right, you and me outside now, stripping off his armor as he walks out the door. <laughs> you know, I, I imagine the Space Wolves would be that... <sighs> they would want to measure up the new guys. Yeah, Wouldn't of course. they? They would just be like, how good are you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can just see them cracking the knuckles in the corner with a pint of Finris and Eel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's a bit more here as well. Very important. This is a clever piece. The, very important, and Games Workshop, I salute you, because yes. this is the core rules. Yes, and this is what the core rules have boiled down to. And that's it. Yeah, that's 40k. Yep. That is the bones of the system. It has everything that's in the book. Let's just make that clear as well. It's in the yep. book as well. Yeah. But this exactly. is like your almost your quick reference sheet. Yeah, so core rules. Each of the pages just in miniature form. Miniature form rule books from a miniature company. Hey. <laughs> See what you did there. Yeah, that was it's... that was awful, Justin. That was awful. I'm an awful person. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> Where's the whippy stick? I think so they got rid of these. And they've replaced it with something that's a lot more twenty first century. Ooh. And a lot shinier. Yeah, I like this. So this is your new ruler then. Mm-hmm. This is actually a really nice, clever idea, and I like it because whenever I lay this down on my gaming table. I can see my gaming table beneath it and still yes. read this. Yes. That's clever. We also have some dice. Of course. Ooh, I like the dice. All right. I'm going to do this on camera. Test roll. You're going to test roll on camera. I'm going to test roll the dice. Not a bad set. Those are nice average rolls. Yep, you'd have hit with everything then. <laughs> no, not with everything. Two's and one. Close enough. 
But you also have all the bases you require. Yes, of course. Uh, including the larger bases and the flight, flight stands too. Yeah. I like the new flight stands. They're quite nice. That little curve thing too. Yeah, I like yeah. that. Yeah. Instead of the old ones, which was just a straight up peg, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. So these are going to let you do something a little bit more dynamic, mm -hmm. which is it's nice. All right, well, there's only one thing to do here, John. Yes. And you know exactly what that is, don't you, John? And you've been chomping at the bit to do that, haven't you, John? I have. And I'm just dragging this out, so I'm making you... Can I go and build them now? Yes. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Guys, we will take a break here. John's going to go and get these built. We will come back and show you the, the finished models. I'm expecting these to look absolutely gorgeous. We'll see you in a bit. Hi, everybody. We are back. John, you've built the Dark Imperium. Mm -hmm. How'd it go? This is a fantastic set to put together. Really, really nice. The, the plastics are excellent. The sprue layout is pretty good as well. And... One, one of my many thank yous to the sprue and the model designers on this. The numbering on the sprues is excellent, and I finally see little like letter tabs on the sprue, so it's like sprue A. Yes, I know that sprue A now, mm. and I can lay it all out. So basically, for the, the beginner who has never built a model before, this is going to be a really easy guide for them? Yep, this is a real nice step-by-step. -step. The instructions are superb mm. as well, so I'm very happy about that. Well, I have to say, both forces, whenever they're laid out on the tabletop, you get a fair chunk of miniatures here. Yeah, 53 in total. And uh, they look lovely. They do. You they know, really, GW really have do. really done a great job on the sculpts for these. Mm -hmm. uh, I love the, the bloat drone. Yeah, the, oh. <laughs> the bloat drone's pretty badass, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, the, the actual story behind this, I was told at UK Games Expo, yeah. essentially, you know what this thing does? Mm. So if I put this under close camera, just so I can have a look while I ramble. All right, go for it. This thing, see these tubules on the ground? Uh huh. Basically, it hovers along the battlefield, sucking up all of the, the nasty dead bits of corpses, all the fluids, all the gunk, all the dirt, all the grime, uh -huh. and then it fires them through these. All right. <laughs> so it, it basically, whenever it fires, it is just hosing you With in a big shower of horribleness. Yeah, I can imagine that's not going to be very pleasant. Oh, but the, the <laughs> design is really great. I'm looking forward to actually getting to paint one of these, mm -hmm. you know, because it's got that sort of technological bioorganic mix to it yeah techno organic mix to it i guess you could call it if that's a word Bi Te techno organic Bi bioorganic no Te techno organic bio Te never mind okay okay <laughs> but no it's it's a fantastic model it's mm -hmm. a nice big model in the kit yeah so if you and your mates are splitting this and you're going on the chaos side you're gonna have fun painting this one definitely uh where do we go next? Do you want to just focus on the chaos to start with? Yeah, let's focus on the chaos. I want to I want to focus on the the plague marines first. Okay. Because I came across, and this is my second salute to the guys that did the model design and the sprue layout. Mm -hmm. um, the plague marines are spread across uh, all three of the the sprues for the death guard. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, well, I see a couple of duplicates in there. That's fine because the the pox walkers. There's two model designs, but because you have a squad of twenty, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So they they still all look excellent. But on the Marines, I was like, yeah, duplicate Marines are fine too. And I started building away, and I was like, hang on a minute, there's only like the main body, the backpack, and one arm yeah. on well, each of these let, duplicates. Let me uh, let me bring them in here, and we Go can talk about them. So, so these are some of the guys here you're on about, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Um, and you get seven of these guys in the box, which is really, really nice. I'm going to see if I can point out, in fact, you've just done it for me. You've pointed out the two that, have, uh, that were on the duplicate sprues. This one and this one? No. This oh, one wait. this one? Yes, yes, sorry, the front two. The front two? Okay, yeah. I'll pull these away. So they're, they share most of their parts. Yeah, I can uh, see the similarities in the, the shoulder pad here. Yeah. yeah, except for a couple of bits, which is basically what lets them have the weapons. Yeah. But what the, the model designers and the sprue layout guys did really, really well is they've still made them individual enough by giving them different helmets, and instead of one, one has chainmail, one has a cloak. Mm -hmm. So it's nice that they just did, just didn't settle on a, a straight duplicate. They actually did build uh, other parts into the design, so they did look different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but those parts match onto the uniform body yeah. essentially. Yeah, really nice touch. A very nice touch. So it it means that no matter what, the the guys still look individual. Mm -hmm. He's my favorite. Ah, uh, he's he's got a very aggressive pose. I'm guessing this is our plague sergeant, or I hope he is. I'm going to make him my plate sergeant anyway. Okay, fair enough. The interesting <laughs> thing is, some of the sculpting they've done here, you've got like sensors and stuff on top with smoke coming out of them. Yeah. That's not something I've painted before, so that's going to be an interesting one for me. Have fun with that. <laughs> oh, I intend to. I Good. intend to have a lot of fun painting this stuff. You know what it's going to be? It's just going to be like bilious looking gases and stuff. You see, th you know? this is what I'm thinking. If I want, Whenever I paint these, I want them to look poisonous. Mm. 
I want the, them to look as if Papa Nurgle has just filled them up with every kind of nastiness that you can yeah. before going out onto the battlefield. So you're, you're going to be looking at like very vibrant greens and possibly even vibrant purples and stuff maybe in the smoke? Um, possibly, possibly. Yeah. You see, what I'm, what I'm hoping to do is a mixture. So if I'm going for like, say, if you remember there was this, an old Games Workshop color, Scorpion Green. Oh, yeah. Now, if I do that and give it a nice wash down, just something to make it look dirty, mm -hmm. and then from that, I'll actually do some black on the end of it, maybe break out my airbrush a little bit just to feather it through. Yeah. And then it'll just look like this nasty greenish smoke coming out of it with the, the dark pollutedness of it on yeah. the end of it. Yeah. Might work really well. Plague so, Marine's fantastic. So that that's my second salute to the set for that. Okay. Um, ca, ca, do you want to do the Pox Walkers and then we'll do the... Yeah, we'll do the, the Pox leaders. Walkers because these are the guys that you do get true duplicates in the box, I believe. Yes. Um, right, so, so there's 20, separate. but there's 10 individual sculpts. Yeah. So but still I'll 10 individual sculpts is good. Just gather a, a set of them here and we'll see how many duplicates we can, can see here. All right, so... They are really cool looking little dudes. They've really upped their game on these little guys. Mm. Um, I think I remember in the Dark Vengeance box looking at the, I think it was Chaos Renegades or something like that. I wasn't so impressed on the detail, mm. but these are tremendous. Like these are really, really good in mm. comparison. Yeah, but I mean like if, if I'm right, I believe these are actually essentially plague zombies. So they've been infected by whatever disease Nurgle has put on the planet. Yeah. And now they're just coming back to actually munch brains mm -hmm. or spread the disease even more yeah this has to be my favorite guy yeah he's my favorite as well with the, <laughs> the big cloak you can imagine him almost being like a bureaucrat or an aristo of some sort he he feels like he he maybe came from the church oh the ecclesiarchy yeah yeah maybe he maybe he was a member of the ecclesiarch maybe but I mean, you get so many of these in the box and because of the way this type of unit is designed within the game now mm -hmm. i'm happy to see that we're getting a lot of them so yeah. let me grab grab the rest of them <laughs> You do get a horde of these, so <laughs> start swinging them through. And I love the the corruption that you're seeing because they've really went to town. It's not just, oh, they're, they've got some warps, they've got some guts hanging out. Yeah. No, these guys have horns, tentacles, tails, the works, yeah. all you know, shooting out of them. There's there's a particular one in there, and maybe you'll find him as you're looking through him, but he's actually using one his third arm to scratch his chin. Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so... Is it that one? No, it's not this one, I don't think. Yeah, it is, it's that one. He's, oh god, yeah! He's, he's like, touching his chin. <laughs> yeah, and he's got a, another arm coming up and out. Yeah. <laughs> they are really, really cool. Mm -hmm. There's, it's still, it's nice to see such crisp detail on something that would essentially be, I would assume, a very cheap, cheerful unit. Well, these guys are really much the rank and file. If you want a, a nice big tar pit unit, yeah. put up a full unit of these. And whenever you actually go for the 20-man unit, you're getting some bonuses in there as well. Mm -hmm. But ah, they're just really, really nicely done. I'm really happy with the with these guys. Mm -hmm. Let's just <laughs> gently now bring them all out the way. Right. Let's let's look at the leaders because these guys are insane. Yes. Really yes. insane. All right. So the first one we have here is the malignant plague walker mm -hmm. or plague caster. Plague apologies. caster. And he is essentially your psyker. Yeah. And like I said in the first part, it's nice to have a psyker in here mm -hmm. that's actually going to let you get a feeling flavor for the, that bit of the game that some starter sets would miss out. Yeah. You know, and the, the detail is beautiful. He's got like, some nice motion to him. I like the fact he's almost doing the aerosol cannon lighter thing because he's actually <laughs> blowing whatever that is. Like, if you yeah. look at his face, he is actually taking a, a great big puff uh, at whatever he's holding his hand, which is pretty cool. Again, this is going to be an interesting one to paint because I would want to paint this different to the smoke because this is essentially some form of psychic energy yeah. that he's blowing away from himself. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're possibly going to keep that, that same nasty, or decrepit green tone to ca it. Casting a bale fire sort of esque. I can see a lot of really good painters out in the community doing a lot of insane source lighting yeah. on that. Yeah, well, see, this, this is the one I would do the source lighting on. Really? And I have an idea for right, it. Right, go on, explain it. Then. So you see where the bell is. Uh huh. I would have it as if there's a light coming from there shining down the way on him. Oh. Which could be very cool. So this is our noxious blight bringer. Uh -huh. And this guy, oh, the number of sensors and stuff you have to paint up. Mm -hmm. He's got plasma pistol. I love the fact that it's the old school plasma pistol. Yeah. Just looks really, really good. Mm -hmm. Now for the daddy of the faction. Say hello to the Lord of Contagion. He's so cool that they put him on a 50 mil base. Yeah, and look at the size of that axe. That axe has, like, smaller blades in it. Yeah, it's essentially got the big main axe head, yeah. and then if you get someone just right, 
you can decapitate them with circular saws. Yes. Which is <laughs> lovely. And again, tons of spikes, tons of actual, I would do this as like a, a flayed skin or a mm. leather of some sort. Yeah. You know, but, oh, lovely. <laughs> lovely. And having big open spaces like this, some of your freehand painters are going to go to town on it. Not to mention the, the rust and blood effects that you can do on this. Because mm -hmm. this axe, this is not a clean axe. It is a, a rusty piece of death metal. Death metal. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's, that's, whenever I imagine the chaos units, I imagine just heavy duty, heavy metal in the background. Yep. Just rocking out. No, well, you're not wrong. I will separate everybody out. Uh, it doesn't have to be too neat because this is chaos, so a little bit of a chaotic layout. Uh -huh. Just in case we come to show off everything again. If I stop knocking miniatures over. And I'm making John wait to actually talk about the, the, the Golden Boys yes. from the, the box that he likes. They're not the Golden Boys, they're awesome. <laughs> well, there's the question. Are you going to do these as Ultramarines? I've never painted Ultramarines. And it's not, it's not a choice, it's just I wasn't that keen on the, the colours personally. Mm. Um, you'll remember a long time ago, and some of the community members will remember, I did a, a little house faction, a little yeah. house chapter called the Stone Templar. Mm -hmm. And I actually had a bit of background worked up on them and where they were coming from and why they were doing what they were doing. And They were basically uh, a successor to the Black Templar. Mm -hmm. So I think third founding or something like that, perhaps, okay. or, or late second founding or something. I hadn't quite worked all those nuts and bolts into it, but um, I had a nice army of them. Mm. Got rid of them, but I kept one squad and one Terminator oh, squad. I see. So they're still in my cabinet, and I've been looking at them going, just, you know, they're just waiting for the right opportunity. And Primaris might be it. And the, I think the Primaris, because of the way they've been introduced into the backstory, I think it's the perfect opportunity for me to give that scheme another go. Although that kind of gives you the leg up on me then. How so? Because you've already got two additional units that I don't have yet. No, I'm not going to use them. No? No. They're, they're the old scheme. They're the retired guys. When, when has the Space Marine ever retired? Well, these guys have. Only in death does you end. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write them into the, the story for the reason of having the Primaris turn up okay, for okay. them. So. Alright, well here, uh, pick me a unit out from your side right. to, uh, to have a look at here. Let's, let's have a look at our, I say basic, I say basic, but you know, our standard infantry, uh, our, our intercessor squad. So there's right. two five-man squads in the box. Okay, and these guys have the new bolt rifle, yeah? Yes. Alright, so bringing these guys in. They do look nice. They do have that weight, that gravitas to them yeah. that you want from a, a space marine. Mm -hmm. The armor design, super clean. Yes, and that's that's something that I really like like about it. Mm -hmm. We don't need a lot of little bits of iconography. There's not a lot of purity seals on them either. I think that was a, a story decision mm -hmm. that only the sergeants really have sort of purity seals on their weapons and on their armor. But there's nothing to say that if you like the purity seals on your marines, you couldn't actually grab some of your old ones and pop them on here and there. Of course, if you want to play a a Primaris chapter that is maybe a bit more experienced, more veterancy to it, mm. then you'd certainly add a lot of decoration to them, I would say. Yeah, well, this is the thing that where the storyline is picking up from. Like I said, it's the end of that campaign where Robert Goldman has been dropping these guys off around the galaxy. Yeah. So by this stage, you're, you're bound to have had some of these guys who have came in fresh and now have earned sort of that veteran status. Yeah. But they're, they're beautiful minis, and I think they're going to be an absolute joy to paint. They, they have such an attitude to them. That's that's the the best thing about them for me. Well, again, it's it's that iconic silhouette. The guys yep. at Games Workshop who had to resculpt this have done a fantastic job. Yep. Now we're on to the Hell Blasters. Ah, now these scare me. Yes, they should. These scare me <laughs> very muchly. Yes, very muchly is now a word. Very much. <laughs> so these guys have the upgraded plasma rifles. Do we have a name for these? Uh, I'm just looking at my plasma incinerator. Yeah. Sounds right to me. Yeah. <laughs> Like looking at the detail on it, oh, it's lovely. Mm -hmm. You know, it looks as if they've they've built in some extra cooling systems and stuff to it. Yeah, it just looks like a proper compact plasma rifle. You know, that's... No, no, it's bigger than the old ones. No, no, I mean, no, because those were plasma guns. These right. are rifles. These are big, proper, hefty things. Ah, okay, I get you. That, that's my opinion, anyway. Yeah. They have, but... they've got some pretty nice stats on them, too. I'm just looking yeah, at Yeah, having a squad of five on these... It's yeah. very scary, especially with that commander letting you reroll the one. So you can basically make sure these guys are in range and mm -hmm. just supercharge the whole time. Get that yep. that extra strength, that extra wound. Yep. You know, with very very little risk to yourself. Absolutely right. Um, so that's the intercessors and the hell blasters. Yes. Um, so we'll do it the same way. I've got my my fancy unit. Uh huh. Uh, 
my Inceptors. Inceptors, these guys are called? Yes. Now, so, as we discussed in the first half, these guys are essentially an orbital drop troop. Mm -hmm. So, as you can imagine, them standing in an airlock, waiting to go. Yep. And here they are. I like the way the new light stand works. Yes, that's very pretty, isn't it? It's it's a lot more cinematic than the old one. It's it's a, a beautiful little aesthetic choice to go with that sort of curved flight stand. I'm really yeah, and is there just like a little peg hole in the back of the, the backpacks here? No, it's um, what looks like a hinge. Ah. And you, you put your glue onto the, the top of the flight stand and then just set it on. So you could actually pose the, the tilt of the model if you want. Ah, I see. So it's not fixed as such. If you want to pin it, I'd say you probably would. Mm. But I was happy with the way they are. So. Yeah. And it's a good connection point, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, now there's one thing I wanted to check with these guys because I can't remember it. What is the rate of fire on these new, essentially miniaturized heavy bolters? Okay, so the assault bolter. Yep. Assault three. So assault three. Mm -hmm. So each of those are getting three shots. So each guy's getting six. So that's 18 shots from a three man unit. Yeah. Ooh, mama. Strength? Uh, strength five. That's pretty good. Yeah. Because that's, that's bringing you up even with my Plague Marines for that four up to wound. Yeah. Oh my god. It. I'm amazed at how quickly the, the rules have now drilled into my head, being able just to go... Up, 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 up. <laughs> you're coming back to it. You're getting that mentality in there again. No, no it's, it's a new mentality, though. Mm. You know, this is not figuring out the, the actual curve on the old charts. This is simple maths, and yep. it gets drilled into you really quick, which I'm really liking. Yep. All right, I'm going to pick a random one here. Who's this? Okay, so that's one of my Primaris lieutenants. Okay, now do these guys join squads or are they standalone heroes, I wonder? Um, I think we'll have to play a game to find out. I think we may have to. Mm. But he's, he's running around with a power sword and a bolt pistol. Yep. Well, his, his keywords are infantry, primaris, character, lieutenant. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's one of the things I think has dropped. I think your characters don't join units anymore. Mm -hmm. But he will probably give out some bonuses in his abilities. Yeah. And from that, it's, it's something I like. Because you imagine a character standing on his own is pretty vulnerable, right? Mm -hmm. The important thing to remember is, as long as you keep him behind your main lines, yep. I can't target him unless he's the closest model. Yep. Which is a really, really smart touch for the rules, because it means that you can't just get someone sniping you with uh, bolters and you know rapid-fire weapons. Yep. And I'm sure there's probably going to be snipers out there eventually who can just ignore that. Now, what... What's useful about the, the, the lieutenants, and I'm going to suggest that if you're running them, mm. keep one near the two intercessor squads mm. and one near the Hellblasters. Okay. Um, because they have a thing called tactical precision. Mm -hmm. You can re-roll wound rolls of one for friendly chapter units that are within six inches of uh, this model. Now there's an important thing. It says chapter, right? Yep. So if you're actually running units and running multiple chapters, you actually could have it that because they're from a different chapter... They don't confer that bonus. Possibly. I'm I'm not 100% certain on that, but that's that's kind of the flavor I'm getting from what I've read so far. So yeah. I, I could be wrong there, so don't don't quote me. It could also be, you know, because it says friendly chapter units, if you're running a mixed force, like a, a joint operations force, so you've got Astra Militarum alongside these yeah, guys. Yeah, if you want to do something really themed as well, though. Yeah. Because say you wanted to theme it that you had two Space Marine chapters fighting, play like a four-player battle or something with you and your mates. Yeah. It means that you're not constantly throwing across your special abilities well, to your mate. It says one for one friendly, so it's, it's already stipulating it has to be a friendly model. Uh, but the, then it the, also the, stipulates... The, words, the keyword chapter there? Yeah. Well, if you're fighting two Space Marine armies against each other, the friendly bit covers that. Uh, but no, 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 but I mean playing a four-player, so me and a mate playing Space Marines, right. you and a mate playing Chaos... Okay. I'm saying those rules, I think it's maybe to separate the two forces. To, we to confer a bonus to your friend rather than... Yeah, to not confer yeah, a bonus to, confer to your friend. It, yeah. To not confer that's bonus what I'm to saying, friend. yes. Okay. I agree, I didn't say that. Th that's, that's what I'm thinking, but <laughs> let, let's not get bogged down. So, yep. this is your other lieutenant? That's the other lieutenant. So he has an auto-bolt rifle. I love his pose. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so heroic, and the fact that he's dual-wielding it alongside a bolt pistol yeah. is just so cool. And the auto-bolt rifle is assault too. Oh, lovely. Which is quite cool as well. Yeah. I love the big drum mag that they've put onto it. Uh -huh. <laughs> it makes it look so mean. And having that sling there as well. Mm -hmm. Again, there is so much you can do with these. So many chances for good painting opportunities and stuff. Yeah. I love the fact that I can now fire bolt pistols in melee. Yeah. Um, who do you want to pick next? Banner? We'll save the best for last, so we'll go with the banner guy. Primaris Ancient. Okay. Primaris Ancient. Mm -hmm. So. Oh. 
See, this is what I think they've done really clever. So this is a really nice banner, yep. but it's got no iconography on it, mm -hmm. except for imperial iconography. So yep. this can be anything you want. Yeah, I mean, uh, they've they've had that design philosophy on their banners for quite a while, unless you've bought a chapter-specific box set. Mm -hmm. It's like a Blood Angel set or a Dark Angel set. Yeah. That's clearly going to be the, the chapter you're primarily going to be painting. Mm -hmm. But a lot of their banners have been pretty blank, but it's just the level of detail on that one is just yeah. beautiful. So well, it's 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 razor sharp. It it feels brand spanking new and heroic. Like this is not an old war banner. Yeah, which I really like. Okay, last thing is the captain. Your captain. Mm -hmm. And he is just so badass. He it's is ridiculous. Look at him. So he's running around. He's got a power sword, which is, is actually slightly bigger than the others. Mm -hmm. He's got a power fist, and on that power fist, he has a new type of bolter with yep. a, a little ammo feed going to his backpack. Yep. So it's uh, the Bolt Storm Gauntlet, mm -hmm. and it has two um, profiles for ranged and melee. Mm -hmm. So obviously melee is him punching people with it, mm -hmm. but the the Bolt Storm Gauntlet at range is range twelve, pistol three. Yeah. So he's got a bit of shooting in there as well. Yeah. But it's, it's it, that keyword pistol. Yeah. His um, sword though is also a master crafted power sword, so he's uh, coming in with a fair amount of melee. Yeah. Yeah. And then his armor actually looks almost to be Terminator like. It's it's bigger and heavier. Let me grab one of the they they say the Primaris Marines. They, they say uh, Gravis armor in here. Yeah. So it's it's a, like a pattern of Mark Ten. It's maybe just like a bigger. Yeah. You see, the, this is a different thing because before you had the the patterns. Yeah. Well, you had the marks, and the mark had a pattern name, but no sub patterns to it. Yeah. Now it seems that we have this new mark mm -hmm. and a lot of sub patterns in there. So if we look at this. Whenever you look at his armor, you look at the, in fact, if I grab the, this guy, so you see if you look at the chest plate, yeah. you can see it's bigger, heavier, the gore, it's higher, mm -hmm. the shoulder pads are, again, bigger, heavier, even the backpack yeah. is beefier on this guy. It, it may be and that... down to the legs as well. Yeah, it may be that Gravis armor is just the, the Primaris' bit heavier type, Yeah, perhaps. Yeah, but you see, this looks, if they redesign the Terminators, I am hoping that it's very similar to this Gravis pattern. I'm not. Because really? I I would like the Primaris specific guys to retain that aesthetic. Mm -hmm. I would like, ideally, in my own opinion, I would like the Terminators to look sort of more like what they did for the 30k with the Cataphracty armor. Mm -hmm. Because I like that heavy bulkiness. Mm -hmm. I, want, I want them to retain that. But you see, this echoes that very nicely. But it looks more mobile. True. And true. Terminators aren't noted for being the most mobile. They're being tough and resilient, but they're mm. not mobile. As yeah. Such. Well, again, it's it's one of those things we'll have to wait and see on because Terminators. I would hope they would redesign them. I hope they would echo this, mm. still keeping that DNA of a Terminator, but echoing this. Mm -hmm. You know, so very similar in the legs, similar in the body. Keep the shoulders the same, and then maybe actually bring back the the helmet that the Terminators had from the Heresy era. Because yeah. I I have to say. The, the modern 40k Terminator design, it's one that I'm not overly fond of. I do I, like the 30k ones a lot better. Yeah, but I like all the Terminator styles. I mean, I'm, I'm a bit of a... I'm happy so long as it says Terminator armor on it because mm. it just mm. looks intimidating, Yeah, regardless. Yeah, overall, I think this is a fantastic starter set. This, this yeah. has been a, a joy to build and a joy to look at, so... Mm. I, well, can't, I can't say much more than that. Yeah, well, everybody will have to stay tuned in the, the coming months whenever we're actually working on our own personal projects because yeah. this, this has got us back in, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Hook, yeah. line, and sinker. Yeah. Hook, line, and sinker. Yeah. So, uh, everybody, tell you what, get your comments in below. Is the Dark Imperium starter box something that you and me are looking at? Are you someone who's new to 40K, who has never played it before, and this is maybe bringing you in? If you are, it's well worth a look, that's yep. my opinion. And if you're an old veteran who's been looking for a reason to get back into a really fantastic narrative world, again, fantastic reason to get back into it. So mm -hmm. I think we'll move on here. We will see you in the next one.